thank you once again to the committee to giving us this opportunity to present um, a little overview on the genetic analysis solutions for Thermo Fisher Scientific. My name is Vansi Sangvi. I'm the business development manager for our ANZ territory. Uh, I've got Emma, my colleague on the line, Emma Campbell, who's going to help me with the slides um, so that she can um, scan through them while I've called in from the phone. So Emma, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so this is just a slide um, to really showcase the history and impact that Thermo Fisher has had in responding to public health cases, um, not just uh, in the current pandemic, but also in the past with uh, Zika, SARS, H1N1, Ebola. We have dedicated business units that are, are responsible for these sort of outbreak research um, and outbreak uh, community reach, including in animal health testing as well. And our scale and our global presence really gives us the ability to quickly um, scale up production without compromising on product quality so that we can conduct and support uh, required labs uh, and keep them up and running even remotely during this outbreak. Um, we have part of our portfolio that includes items such as PPE uh, that we've been uh, involved with supplying globally to protect healthcare workers and first responders. What I'm primarily going to focus on today, though, is our portfolio for analysis detection um, and how that helps to support then vaccine candidates and production of that as well. Next slide, please, Emma. So again, this is the sponsor talk. So I uh, just wanted to really highlight the broad portfolio that Thermo Fisher can really support uh, our researchers in with regards to SARS-CoV-2. The business is not limited to what you see here on the um, slide, but it really just does um, bring out the scale that the uh, company can really support everyone in, in terms of the capabilities, the broad portfolio technologies, as well as comprehensive services that we can offer. Um, I'm not gonna go into all of the products here, but of course, if there's anything that um, your lab is currently looking to urgently procure for COVID research, please do get in touch with us because that is all getting priority in terms of um, uh, availability as well. Next slide, please, Emma. Thank you. Um, what I really wanna highlight today, uh, given um, the meeting and the uh, theme around the meeting is our genetic analysis solutions. So whether you're looking at the workflow all the way from virus discovery, sequencing, pathogen detection, epidemiology, vaccine research, or host genetics and population genomic studies. Thermo Fisher today has um, technologies that can suit all your requirements. Uh, we've heard from a lot of speakers today about um, technologies similar to this that they've used currently in their work. And I just thought to take the opportunity to introduce you to our portfolio of uh, these platforms. Next slide, please, Emma. So I wanted to go through with an overview on um, four main technologies, next-gen sequencing, CE, capillary electrophoresis, real-time PCR microarray analysis, and how we can support through these um, in your SARS-CoV-2 research, but primarily looking at some of the innovative solutions in next-gen sequencing that we have um, as part of our iron torrent portfolio. Next slide, please. So iron torrent solutions have been at the forefront of uh, outbreak research for a number of years now. Um, and they've often been the platform of choice or the solution of choice due to its simplicity and speed of turnaround time as well. For example, in, uh, during the Ebola outbreak uh, in 2015, Thermo Fisher partnered with Professor Ian Goodfellow at the University of Cambridge, who chose the solution as they needed a workflow that was robust and relatively straightforward and so the Iron Amplisic Ebola Research Panel was the solution that they uh, decided to go with. And we have shown the same robustness in our solutions with the recent pandemics as well. Next slide, Emma. So what I really wanted to cover today is two aspects of our NGS solutions for SARS-CoV-2 research. Um, give you a little introduction on our panel for pathogen discovery and epidemiology, uh, but then also give you an overview on our toolkit that we uh, have available for host immune response and vaccine research and development. Um, all these solutions are part of an end-to-end -end workflow with a robust informatics suite. They all utilize one single ke chemistry for continuity across the development pipeline and across one platform as well. Next slide, Emma. 
Thank you. So um, I'm not only going to emphasize again to this audience the importance of epidemiological surveillance uh, and the impact it has had in this global pandemic, but I did want to highlight a couple of um, uh, news items or a couple of publications that came out earlier in the year uh, utilizing the iron torrent NGO solutions. Um, these platforms were utilized for their highly sensitive variant detection, even at very low viral copies. Um, and NGS was able to provide high resolution information to distinguish the pathogen strains that differ by as little as a single nucleotide, as we've heard before, opening up applications such as viral evolution and surveillance response, which was crucial to the research. Um, here, the virology department at Lazzaro Spallanzani National Institute for Infectious Diseases in Italy. Uh, we saw some of the first work come out into um, generating a whole genome sequence that was done on the uh, Thermo Fisher's Iron Torrent NGS platform. And once again, it was due to the ability to run multiple samples at a very quick and rapid turnaround uh, time uh, that, was, uh, that enabled them to produce the uh, information in a timely manner. Next slide, please. So this is just an overview about the Iron AmpliSeq SARS-CoV-2 research panel that we launched a few months ago. Um, it is available on the Iron Torrent platforms and provides a high throughput workflow for monitoring genomic evolution. The beauty of the Iron Torrent workflow is that you can actually utilize this panel even with very low sample numbers if you have urgent samples that you want to push through, but it also has the capability of increasing your uh, multiplexing by utilizing a larger chip format. So you can have the scalability from low to high throughput samples on the one platform. This panel actually works with a range of biological samples, so not just um, isolates or cultured, uh, uh, cultured sources, but it can also work with direct samples, uh, clinical samples from patients as well. It provides accurate SNV level information with 99% coverage of the genome. Uh, and as far as we, we know at the moment, it covers all potential serotypes as well. One of the key features of our uh, iron torrent workflow is our built-in bioinformatics pipeline, and the AmpliSeq panel now is also available with its own variant annotation plugin. Early access sites have shown superior panel performance as well. And Emma, if you move to the next slide, I just want to highlight that you can find more information on this uh, and the work that's come out of this panel from um, a webinar that's going to be hosted on the 19th of May. Um, I'd be glad to share the link around with everyone uh, on, the, on the call, uh, and I would highly encourage you to join us at this webinar. You will have a local speaker in Professor Soren Alexanderson. He's the director of the Geelong Center for Emerging Infectious Diseases, and he was one of our early access sites on the AmpliSeq panel, uh, which he ran on the Iron Torrent Gene Studio S5 and the Iron Chef that you see here in the picture. Um, and he uh, had some really good feedback for us uh, on the panel. And so he will be talking a little bit more about his experience on the 19th of May. We will also have um, a global product manager joining us at this uh, webinar, Anjali Shah. And she's actually going to be talking about some of the global initiatives um, and collaborations we've had in the last few months uh, with researchers on the AmpliSeq panel not just on the Gene Studio, but also on our new flagship uh, sequencer, the Iron Torrent Genexis sequencer. Next slide, Emma. So for those of you uh, who may not be familiar, I just wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to the Iron Torrent Genexis system. It's the world's first key turnkey automated NGS platform to provide specimen to report in a single day. Um, what I really want to highlight here is that this platform has been designed um, to really address two key issues. One is turnaround time, and the other is the hands-on manual workflows that are often related with NGS. It allows you to have, um, it's, it's got minimal hands-on time with only about 10 to 15 minutes for setup, and then your library prep sequencing analysis is all part of one workflow in an automated manner. Next slide, please. And what is the real impact of uh, having this panel on the Iron Torrent Genexis system? Uh, you may have seen in the news recently, uh, we had an article that came out from the Children's Hospital uh, in Los Angeles that highlighted the urgency and the need for urgency when a patient and his mother showed signs of COVID-19 at the same time as four healthcare workers in the uh, pediatric intensive care unit. So there was 
as you can imagine, immediate concern about transmission between patients and frontline healthcare workers, and to verify the safety of the hospital for patients and staff, the testing was initiated. The healthcare workers did test positive by PCR, and the Center for Personalized Medicine was able to perform next generation sequencing on the Genexis system um, with the samples of the patients as well. Comparative analysis actually showed that the mother and son, as expected, had identical, nearly identical strains of the virus uh, that had originated in Utah. But the four healthcare workers had strains that were only distantly related to each other and to the family. This enabled them to confirm that there was no transmission between the patient family and the healthcare workers. And therefore, further, the healthcare workers um, were able to return back, uh, the, return back into the uh, workforce when once recovered. And they were able to then uh, keep the hospital running with greater confidence and monitor so that they could provide a safe environment for the patient and the rest of the team members. So I would please, again, encourage you all to join us on the 19th of May to hear more about the Iron MPC panel and its impact uh, with the Iron Torrent Genexis system next week. Next slide, Emma. Thank you. Um, another aspect of our NGS portfolio that I really wanted to highlight here is our host immune response and vaccine research development focus. Um, it really focuses on the dynamics of our adaptive, adaptive immune system, uh, which is primarily responsible for the variation in our response to different pathogens, as, as we heard before. Uh, and the main cells that perform this function are the B cells and the T cells. And what enables these B cells and T cells to uniquely respond to pathogens is closely associated with the receptors on their cell surface, known as B and T cell receptors. And the understanding of this molecular repertoire may actually identify potential immunogenic biomarkers of the adaptive immune system that may have the answer to why we see such varied symptoms in patients with COVID-19. So in terms of clinical research, next, Emma. Thank you. Um, and thinking about acute responses uh, and understanding when an immune response is occurring, what kind of response is occurring becomes really important and you need a powerful tool to enable you to do that. The comprehensive toolkit of Oncomine TCR and BCR assays are ideal for monitoring these responses to antigen challenge through the immune repertoire sequencing and very well suited for viral infection and uh, immune response, uh, which is a global need today with COVID-19. Next slide, Emma. So without really going into the details of the immunology behind it, uh, the reason why we actually see such different responses to COVID-19 is due to the comb combinatorial diversity of our adaptive immune systems from our TCR and BCR receptors. And so we know that no two individuals are the same and how they respond to the disease and elicit an immune response can vary significantly. Um, we have seen that in um, COVID-19, as I mentioned before, um, and risk profiling and of the population via screening methods is therefore becoming critical to public health to predict which of these groups an individual would end up in when they contract COVID-19. Historically, there have been lots of different methods to look at TCRs and BCRs um, using different techniques like five prime race or multiplex PCR, both of which have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, next, Emma. But one of the recent advances uh, with our portfolio, the Oncomine assays, allows you to uh, closely look at these receptors and understand this variation through sequencing. These assays are based on iron amplisic technology and provides a combination of PCR and NGS um, and allows you to amplify those target regions to then read it through the sequencing platforms uh, and detect them pretty easily. Next. I'll also give you a brief overview on our microbiome uh, uh, panels as well, just in the next few slides. Next one, Emma. So I'd just like to draw your attention to uh, two studies, uh, one in the US, one in uh, the UK, that are now going to uh, begin very shortly. Um, we have the researchers at the Roswell Park Cancer Center, Catholic Health, and University of Buffalo, in partnership with some official who have pl planned a research study focused on COVID-19 using these TCR, BCR assays. And the goal is to really develop a test which will potentially determine what will be the outcome of a person exposed to COVID-19. And it represents the first precision medicine study uh, really in this field that is going to um, go ahead shortly. We're also partnering with um, the University of Glasgow and their virology department 
who have recently been awarded a mil one million pounds um, to look at this sort of uh, research as well. And again, similar to the uh, New York Im Immunogenomic Consortium, they'll be looking at the TCR and BCR assays to help understand the dynamics of our immune system in response to COVID fashion. Um, my aim really to showcase these technologies here today and especially these panels and solutions is to identify similar partners here in ANZ so we can help advance uh, research in this up and coming field. So once again, please do reach out um, to discuss how we can enable this and move forward with you. Next slide, Emma. So the T cells and the B cells panels, again, are also very involved in vaccine research and development and can be, um, can be useful in answering some pertinent questions here. Uh, the global impact and the necessity to develop vaccines today is more than ever. And we've seen great awareness around the importance of vaccine efficacy to, uh, to advance research in the global public health uh, environment. Some viruses are known to uh, employ something known as antibody-dependent enhancement, which is an in immune in evasion strategy, uh, in which the virus actually binds to the non-neutralizing antibodies to enhance its entry into the host cells and leading to a cytokine storm, as has been seen in dengue, HIV, and influenza in the past. And of course, now we've seen that uh, potentially be a, a, a strategy, even with coronavirus. Next slide. Next one. Thanks. Um, so again, as ADE can also hamper vaccine development uh, and may actually worsen uh, conditions in a patient then rather than provide protective antibodies against uh, the very disease, it can be useful to monitor uh, and uh, understand the genetic signatures behind this using B and T cell receptor uh, sequencing panels. Next slide. So as I mentioned before, one of the integral parts of our iron torrent workflow is often our bioinformatics pipelines and the solutions with reporting that comes along with our workflow. Um, you don't need to be a bioinformatician to really uh, utilize our analysis pipeline. And with the B cell and T cell rep repertoire assays, we actually have an extremely multidimensional analysis reporting that uh, is provided as part of the workflow. I'm not going to go into all of these different immunological concepts here, but what I really wanted to emphasize is that the analysis pipeline at the end of the workflow provides you with a report with a lot of these questions that are often asked by immunologists, um, but may not receive from raw data in sequencing. Next slide. Next one. Thank you. So as I mentioned, uh, part of our immune uh, response or our immune repertoire toolkit is also the microbiome and the immune response research assays. Now these two assays, again, provide different information around how our immune system is responding to such viral infections, whether you're looking at the effect of the gut microbiome and its um, impact on the susceptibility to infection, um, or also looking at immune response research assays to characterize your immune pathways and looking for really low expressing genes with greater sensitivity using NGS. Next slide. So just as a summary of the power of iron torrent for TCR and BCR sequencing, it, it's not just the chemistry of the AmpliSeq technology that makes this a powerful tool for targeted NGS. The NGS, the iron torrent NGS platform itself provides you with the speed, the simplicity that is needed sometimes for outbreak research studies uh, with rapid turnaround times and automated workflows. The sequencing, depending on the panel and the workflow you're looking at, could be from anywhere to a single day to about two, two and a half days. So it allows for easy adoption to new users as well, with lower user intervention to improve lab efficiency. Um, you can get, uh, due to the chemistry, you can also use samples with very low input. So having higher success rates to analyze samples directly with very low viral, uh, viral loads. But most importantly, the power of the iron torrent technology comes from lower substitution errors for SNVs, which allow for a more accurate look at the single nucleotide changes in a genetic sequence. This is absolutely essential when you're studying, uh, when you're trying to study the differences in the VDG, VDJ rearrangements in your com combinatorial diversity when looking at TCR and BCR repertoires. Next, please. And next. Thank you. Um, and again, I'd invite you to uh, join the WebEx or the webinar that we had on, available on demand recently talking around these sort of clinical research projects and applications using TCR, BCR sequencing 
and also a paper that was re uh, recently uh, released earlier this year that talks about the importance of a sequencing platform when assessing TCRB convergence. Next one. I won't dwell into each of these technologies, but I just wanted to really give you a quick overview on our capillary electrophoresis, real-time PCR and microarray analysis. Am I next? So everyone's probably familiar with the applied bio, uh, biosystem genetic analyzers, which have again been a crucial part in the workflow for the identification of SARS-CoV-2. We heard uh, recently from um, the work that was done at the Doherty using, um, uh, using another technology for next-gen sequencing. But we were very excited to also learn that the Seek Studio was actually used for confirmation of that work um, at, at Vigil with Julian Drews and Leon Kelly's lab. Um, it's been about three years since we've had the Seek Studio out, and we've seen great uptake of this platform due to its easy plug and play uh, functionality and quick turnaround time to enable such urgent in house testing when needed. Next, please. Thank you. And so Amofisha has obviously uh, also been very involved in the IVD diagnostic sides in terms of the testing kits that are used in pathology labs as well. Again, I won't go through the details of this, but we were one of the first uh, labs, uh, one of the first solutions to get FDA approval, FDA EUA clearance. And the solution is also registered here in Australia for TGA um, IVD workflows as well. And today we've been working tirelessly for the last few months trying to um, deploy these workflows in various parts of the world, including Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and the ramping of our uh, tests and the production of our tests has been uh, incredible to watch. And today, I think we're doing about 5 million tests. We're producing about 5 million tests per week to enable the support of the global need. Next slide. In the interest of time, I won't go into the details of the uh, specificity of our assay, but what I really wanted to point out as a multiplex assay, this, uh, the design of the assay is really targeted to provide you with 100% specificity uh, towards SARS-CoV-2 uh, and to make sure that you're not picking up viruses uh, or other mutations from other viruses. The last two slides just highlight that we also have a research use only solution. It's not just the IVD workflow, but in a research use only, we also have our extraction kits followed by our quantitation and detection reverse transcriptase, master mix, qPCR, the whole workflow as part of the applied biosystem solutions. Um, we launched a platform, the Quant Studio 7 Pro, uh, which is uh, an instrument that uh, allows you to actually run the, uh, run the platform by facial recognition and voice activation. It's very ideally suited for today's hands-free world, um, but it also allows you to provide us with remote service uh, in situations with these lockdowns that we've seen recently. Next one. And lastly, I'd just like to highlight that we are working on an Axiom human genotyping uh, research array, and we're currently requesting your input in the identification of markers covering the important genes associated with SARS-CoV-2 infection susceptibility and drug targets. So please do reach out because we truly believe that with your scientific expertise and combined with our design capabilities, we would be um, we would be in a good position to deliver a very powerful research array that offers host genetic insights. So we encourage you to visit the website on the slide here and give us your input by the 1st of June. Next slide. And with that, I'd just like to say that our mission, which is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer, is stronger than ever before today. Thermo Fisher and colleagues around the world have been working tirelessly for the last few months um, you might recognize some of these platforms from news, uh, news uh, items coming uh, on a daily basis, uh, but please do reach out to us because we do believe that we are in a position to leverage the comprehensive portfolio and also the unmatched depth of capabilities with the scale, the global footprint to allow us to support your research moving forward for SARS-CoV-2. Thank you once again to the uh, organizers for letting us present and apologies again for all the technical glitch. But thank you for your attention.